Thank you so much for tuning in to Rag House Media. Tonight is a special evening. So excited. We're so excited to welcome our very first show, Juanita E. Mance. Welcome to the family. Hi. Thank Hi. you, April. Thank you, Rag House Media. Of course. We are so excited. Her stories are absolutely amazing, thrilling, funny, sad, emotional. You're going to absolutely love them. Life of Gem adventures of a girl from the inland empire that's right <laughs> but first let's hear a word from our sponsor hi i'm delilah and i own hotbox vintage in south pasadena california at hotbox our goal is curating vintage pieces that you can't live without our collection includes everything from the 1940s to even the early 2000s. What excites us is eclectic and unconventional style since there's no one-size-fits-all approach to fashion. Hotbox is priced for accessibility so that literally anyone can discover some vintage gems of their own. Plus, it's sustainable. Find us on Instagram and use code RAGHOUSE at checkout for 20% off your first order at hotboxvintage.com. Hi, everybody. My name is Juanita E. Mance. I call myself Jem for short. That's J-E-M. And this podcast, this video podcast, is based on my decade-long blog, Life of Jem, My Life in the Inland Empire. And it's about me, a girl from the Inland Empire who grew up here, who left here, but eventually who ended up right back where I began in the Inland Empire. I now live in unincorporated San Bernardino. My blog, Life of Gem in the Inland Empire, has hundreds of stories and essays about my life growing up in Ontario, California. So check it out on Google. Just search Life of Gem. Now, I'm a girl who grew up right here in Ontario, where this studio sits. I grew up about two miles away. And I grew up in the 1970s and the 1980s. And I went to Chafee High School. And one of my stories tonight is going to involve that very high school that is a mere miles away from this studio. Now, in the 1970s and 1980s, Pizza Hut was still a restaurant. People wore their headphones and they used a Walkman and used to have to wait in line at Music Plus to buy concert tickets. Can you imagine? Now, I am also an after school special about what not to do in high school. All my chaos from my childhood came home to roost in my junior and senior year and I slept my way through my junior and senior year of high school. Did a lot of partying, too. That's what I write about in my memoir, which is forthcoming, My Inland Empire. And I went from a straight-A student who was destined for Claremont McKenna to a punk rock high school dropout. But my life was not over. And I ended up at UC Riverside after working my way through junior college and then at USC Law School. Talk about redemption. Now, after USC Law School, I was a corporate litigator for years. But then when my father died, I came back home. And I've worked as a Riverside County Deputy Public Defender for over a decade, representing the most mentally ill of the mentally ill population. And what my life as a writer and a Deputy Public Defender has taught me is that stories can change the world. They can teach us a lot. And tonight, I'm going to read a story for you that has three parts. And then afterwards, we're going to talk about what these stories say about life back then and life now, and how policing has changed in California generally. So let's start. And I think it's really important that I start this story off by saying the issue of criminal so-called justice and police brutality is going to be the issue of our times. And we need to continue to stand up against police brutality, against black peoples and other peoples of color. So let's start my story. It's called Girl Fight. My first fight was in elementary school. The girl I fought was small, but she was quick. She hit me three times in rapid succession, right in the face. It hurt so bad that I couldn't even blink. I couldn't hit back, and I started crying. The kids were circling around us, and they booed with displeasure. 
Eventually, the girl took pity on me and stopped hitting me. I can't remember what the fight was about, but it was probably about something I said to the girl. Because as my mom always told me, my mouth is way too big for my britches. My second fight was in high school. I was still in my nerdy phase. This is before Punk Rock Girl came out. Eventually, I would dye my hair blue-black, pierce my nose, wear a punk rock tee and combat boots, and hang out with my best friend Tracy. And no one would mess with us because they thought we were witches. I'll put a spell on you. Now, my opponent in this second fight was a heavy set chola who I will call Christina. Christina wore her hair blowed straight up with Aquanet. And the reason I got into a fight with Christina is because I talked trash to her younger sister. And when Christina came up to me and confronted me, I talked more trash. And then she said, meet me in the South Quad after high school, after school this day. And I said, okay. But word got around quick. And at lunchtime, my wonder twin, she is my actual twin, identical twin sister, Jacqueline, Jackie for short, came up to me and said, Jenny, I heard you're going to fight Christina. That girl is tough. What were you thinking? She is going to kick your ass. I remember sighing and looking at Jackie and saying, Jackie, I know, I know. Jackie looked at me and she said, what is wrong with you? Why do you talk trash if you can't back it up? And me and my twin sister, we have this thing where we don't even need to say anything. So I didn't say anything. My eyes watered. And Jackie looked at me and said, screw it, Jenny. I'll fight her for you. Jackie and I, my proxy, we walked to South Quad after school. And Jackie and Christina went at it for 12, well, what seemed like 12 rounds, blow after blow after blow. I remember closing my eyes and thinking, please let this be over. I was so scared for Jackie. But eventually it was over. And the general consensus was that it was a draw. Jackie's only battle scar was a thick scratch down her cheek because Christina had sharpened her nails to a point and had raked her nails down Jackie's face. Now, I don't know if I thanked Jackie after the fight, but I should have because we all know she saved me a serious ass whooping. Thank you, Jackie. Now, my third fight, number three, was in the 90s and it was more of a chase. We were at Flamingo Hills. It was a nightclub in Pomona, California at the top of Kellogg Hill. And it was me, my twin sister, Jackie, my youngest sister, Annie, and our friend, Gina. And Gina's since passed away, but Gina was amazing. And we we're all dancing and having a great time. And all of a sudden, Jackie gets into an argument with some girl that bumped into her. And Jackie and Annie got kicked out. I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay and dance. So Gina and I stayed and danced. Now, after last call, Gina and I walked out to her car. I think she had a little Toyota Celica. And as we were driving out of the parking lot, a girl hung her head out of a car, looked at us, pointed at me and said, there's that bitch. Shoot, I thought to myself, it sure sucks to be a twin sometimes. It's not like they were going to believe me that I wasn't the girl. So I didn't even try to explain. We just got into the car and I told Gina, drive, Gina, drive. Now, they tried to block us with their car, but Gina, she took off like James Bond. She drove down Kellogg Hill straight to the 10 freeway, hit the 57 and got off on Arrow Highway in San Dimas. But who was right behind us? that car and those crazy girls just two of them just two of us and four of them was not good odds 
and I knew it. Gina was tough, but I was a negative in the equation. So foot on the gas, she kept on driving and driving and driving. And after about an hour of chase, we pulled over in front of a police department and we parked our car and waited and waited and waited. The girls kept on driving by, flipping us off shouting expletives, but eventually they gave up. I remember my friend Gina and I looking at each other. (sighs) We let out a huge sigh of relief, and I chalked it up as payback for the fight Jackie had fought for me years earlier. That's it. That's girl fight. April's coming in now. (laughs) Let me get all this paper out of your way. That is absolutely amazing. Mm. All, all of the, uh, all of the above. Here, let's, let's change this. I have to honestly say, when I first heard that that uh, podcast, it was so cool because I was put, putting myself exactly in all the spots that you were mentioning because it's <laughs> in the Inland Empire. It's in our. Right. We're born and raised here. So after all that story and after all that mention, I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, and now you're a lawyer. (laughs) So It's so ironic, right? (laughs) It is because, I mean, I really think about I used to steal my dad's car when I was that same age, probably about 14 Uh in Upland, California. And my dad would call the police and they would bring me home and he would hug me open arms because he was so worried about me. He wasn't calling the police to put me in jail like Uh they would do now. Uh He was calling the police to save me that is so crazy and imagine now imagine back then if they police like they do now and uh-huh. they took me into custody and put me in juvenile hall i might not be a lawyer that's so true that's so true kind of dive into that more i think that story is um really important because of the knowledge of you being a lawyer and what's happening in the current situations and how you tie that in how you mentioned back then they would just pick you up and take you home exactly right and also i want to um Uh, let everyone know you could call in and talk to this amazing lady here. We're so (laughs) excited to have her. So make sure you, um, if you want to call in, I'm just going to hook up my Bluetooth here and um, you can talk to Juanita E. Mans. What's the number? Area code 909-477-7321. Yeah. And you know, If you think about the second story in high school, that would probably be prosecuted nowadays. At least Christina the Chola would be prosecuted. Uh My twin would probably have a defense of others defense. Mm -hmm. Defense of me is why she fought. But they might prosecute her too. I mean, because high schools are police now. Uh Uh-oh, someone's already calling. We have a call. (laughs) Here you go. Let me put on my glasses. I'll let you answer. Hello, you've reached Life of Gem. Who's this? This is Jackie, 2024. <laughs> this is Jackie, the Wonder Twin? This is Jackie, the Wonder Twin. Yay! Yay! That's so awesome. You have always said that I am the hero of every story that I write. But in this story, in the second part at least, you're the heroine. What do you think about that? I think this if this is a book, this would be the only chapter in which I <laughs> so and I found it ironic that April said that, you know, you're the lawyer and I'm a teacher. So, you oh, know <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Talk to us about policing in uh, high schools. How does that work now, Jackie? You know, I was in the Coachella Valley and we really turned up before there was a zero tolerance policy and this idea to criminalize students, and we've really had to rethink that with that prison to pipeline uh, idea that, you know, if you keep kids out of school, they end up in prison, right? So the best place for them is school. So we have to rethink the way we think about justice in the school system. So there's no more, many school districts have reversed themselves on this idea of zero tolerance, and actually it's more about restorative justice. 
And Jackie's very humble. She actually has her PhD in education. She's uh, part of the administration of special ed in Palm Springs. So thank you, Jackie. You're amazing. We love you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you for saving her ass, too. People's asses, literally. (laughs) Thank you, Wonder Twin. Love you. Bye. 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 And, you know, if we think about the last story, the third story in this series. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. The number is area code 909-477-7321. I'll repeat it. 909-477-7321. Don't be afraid. We don't bite. <laughs> we like the phone to ring. <laughs> So, like I was saying, the third story where uh, Jem and Gina uh, park in front of a police station, uh-huh. would we do that nowadays? Would we think of a police station as somewhere safe? I don't think so, right? Actually, you know what? My niece just recently did that not that long ago because there was uh, some creepy guy that was following her around. So um, I think the guy ended up leaving. I don't think anybody from the station came out, but that's right when she saw it, that was her first initial instinct was to, okay, let me go in here. And I think whether or not it's going to be good or bad, I think the person who was actually following her, who knows what his intentions were, I'm sure they're they're not good. Um, He ended up leaving. So I mean, it works, but, but you're right. There's a whole other side to that. There is. Yeah. And when you add in um, the ethnic component and the economic disadvantage component, mm-hmm. and let's say a mental health component, mm-hmm. you know, interacting with the police can be a very treacherous situation. I have a lot of uh, family members that tell me they don't call the police anymore. Oh, they don't? No, because I had a, a client whose son was killed by the police years ago oh, um, in a chokehold. Yes. So it does uh-huh. happen, and it happens a lot, and we're seeing more and more. And today, in, um, I think it was on ProPublica, a story came out about the Riverside County sheriffs who are police officers uh-huh. abusing a mentally ill man, holding him down for hours and hours, and he eventually died in custody. And yes, yeah. yeah, there's many stories like that, Yeah, unfortunately. And then also, it's just, you also want to hear about the good cops, though, you too, do. right? Because I'm sure you know a lot of good cops. Oh, for sure. There's, yeah. there's a lot of good ones. But I think at this point, you really have to think with these $100 million budgets, mm. where else can that money go? If mm. you put it into schools, you put it into mental health services, you put it into solving the homelessness pro- population problem. Mm-hmm. And, I, you know, the homeless population is, they are my clients. Mm. Everyone we represent at the Public Defender is indigent. So um, if those people had a house, mm-hmm. they've shown that just having a home can decrease crime. And there's a there's a really big issue because less police can mean less crime. And it seems counterintuitive. But when right. you think I was just going to say, huh, really? But it, that's that's there is there proof there's. Well, the thing is, there's a lot of petty crimes mm-hmm. that get prosecuted that don't need to be prosecuted in my opinion maybe we should prosecute the heavy stuff Uh and let the other stuff like shoplifting and trespass let that be a restitution or you know some kind of justice component component where you work with the so-called victim and you work together to create a solution Uh uh-huh all right here we go here's somebody else i'll let you answer okay and Hi, this is Jem. Who's calling? Uh Uh-oh, they hung up. They hung up. They don't like us. Uh Uh-oh, here, should I call them back? Yeah, sure. (laughs) They didn't use star 67, apparently. (laughs) No. (laughs) Let's see. Okay, here we go. Is it a 626? Yes. That's Annie, I think. Oh, I think we're calling Annie. Let's see. It's family day at the Life of Gem show. I Hopefully my it. mom doesn't call in. Oh, that would be fun. <laughs> no, it would not. Because beep, I... Beep, 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 beep. Your, sto- your stories of um, growing up with your mom and your dad, they're so... Oh, it's... it's. Uh, I bet you it's on our side. Here, I'm going to keep trying. Okay. Which is funny because last night we called New York and um, we didn't have an issue at all. So it's, it's just... Every day is going to be different here. My apologies. I'm so sorry if you're trying to call in and it's not happening. We are having issues with the Bluetooth. And we have some questions on the Oh, what are the questions? Okay, here Let's we answer go. some questions. Let's see. The questions are 
Well, I'll tell you the comments. Yay, Auntie by Selena Flores. <laughs> More family. Annette Flores Mance, heart, heart, heart. Uh, Myra Demas, hey. Oh, here's your sister again. Let's get this right. This is Jem. Who's this? Hi, it's Selena. Hi, Selena. This What's is my that? niece, Selena, who's an advocate. Selena, what did, what did you think of the stories? Oh, I like them. I think it's, like, really interesting to, like, see you guys when you're younger. I don't know, I only know you guys are, like, your professional self. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you've been to a concert with me when I'm drinking. That's you've seen me pogo dance. Come on, Selena. What concert was it? Buzzcocks, wasn't it, Selena? Ooh. No, it was um, was it? No, I think it was Echo and the Bunny Men. Oh, okay, oh, not, <laughs> but that's still fun. That's I probably fun. didn't pogo dance, but still, yeah. <laughs> still good music. Yeah. And what do you think about the concept of uh, defunding the police? And by defunding, I mean decreasing their budget and putting some money into community services such as mental health and housing. What do you think of that? Um, I mean, I think that's definitely the first step in like abolition, which needs to happen. Um, and I think like the question was asked, like, oh, like, is there proof? Um, and I mean, there's there's definitely proof there's a city actually i think it's in massachusetts that went ahead and was kind of like a tester for the idea of like defunding the police and they um they ended up actually having a huge decrease in crime rates they you know their um i think it was like their school like graduation rate went up to like 97 percent um she's so and they smart massive reform, um that really just like changed the whole community. And I mean, even today, like representative um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, she said, you know, I don't think it's really that hard to imagine a world where the police are defunded because you go into a suburb and you don't really see the police in the way you see it in like the Bronx or, you know, like downtown LA. Well, Selena, you are wise beyond your years and way wiser than I was at 21. So thank you for calling in. We love you. Of course, love you. Watching you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. And, you know, that brings up a good point. I think there has to be a distinction between the kinds of crimes that require a police military style presence and the kinds of crimes that require a social worker maybe to go out. And there's always the question of violence. What do you do with violence? What do you do with mentally ill people that are violent? And I would argue you build more hospitals and you treat them humanely and get them better. I love that. Here we go. Let me just make sure it's on. And this is Jem who's calling. Hello. Hey, Juanita. Hey, Juanita, this is Junior, Fidel. How you doing? Hi, Fidel. How are you? Fidel went to high school with us, too, April. Oh, he did? Yes. Hi, Fidel. Is he your age or how old? He's your age. Oh, hello. (laughs) He's younger. I I remember April also. Oh, hi. (laughs) So we we have a a weird relationship, right? um, We knew each other when you lived across the street from me. Juanita? And Jim? Knew, Juanita. Yeah. 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 Yes. Okay. So I knew you were nuts back then. So hearing these, uh, <laughs> these, stories, <laughs> hearing these stories about you uh, getting in fights is pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't know that part. But, and then, uh, and then life happened. And then, what, 20, 25 years later, we met each other again. Uh, through Adrian, through your, through your husband. Oh, my goodness. So, Fidel met cool. my husband at Starbucks. And Fidel said something about knowing the twins. And Juanita used to work at Don Jose's in Montclair. Oh, I love that and, place. Yeah. And Adrian said, uh, my wife is a twin and she worked there. And Fidel said, is your wife Juanita? And she's twins with Jackie. And they couldn't believe it. And then Fidel said, and her mom, ooh-hoo. <laughs> mom was crazy. Yeah, very yeah. Very cool. She's so anyhow, right. Bernadette and I are just sitting here watching you guys, and you guys are kicking ass, and awesome show. Nice. Oh, cool. Thank you for watching. One big Inland Empire like <laughs> reunion. I love it. <laughs> That's the thing. People from the Inland Empire, we are patriotic. And I mean that in the best way. We love our city. You, you, yeah. yeah. You yep. know, actually, I, I, 
I hated it for a little bit when I had to come back. Just for a little bit, just to be transparent and real here. But then now it's home is home. Right? And did you ever think you would come back? Because I didn't. No, no, I never thought. Are you kidding? I was living all over by the <laughs> beach and everywhere else. And But you know what? Home is home and I'm happy. So it's Home good. is home. Thank you, Fidel, for coming in. Thank you, Bernadette, for listening. Yeah. Love you. Bye, you guys. Right on. Talk to you guys later. Okay. Bye. Bye. Concerts soon, hopefully. What do we think about when our concert's going to start up? Because I know you, you deal a lot with music, right? You, uh, you're amazing. So when do you oh, think we're going to go to concerts again? I haven't heard anything besides uh, they're going to start creating drive up concerts like in, you know, everybody's kind of heard that. I know my Eagles concert I was supposed to go to this year in April it has been rescheduled for October of next year. So let's see, you know, what happens with that. Although Marshmallow, which is like an electronic, you know, that guy, that DJ, his concert has not been canceled. Hmm. And that's a show that me and my sister are taking our sons to. And that's in October of this year. So I think everything is still up in the air. As far as local shows, they're starting to open up around and surrounding cities. I know um, Orange County has some shows. I'm Hmm. sure they're probably delegate you know they're working on the size and how many people can come in but yeah our new order and pet shop boys got uh continued to 2021 that was at the hollywood bowl yeah same thing so Mm -hmm. you had the same experience yeah if you guys are just tuning in we are so excited gem the life of gem excuse me adventures of a girl from the inland empire brand new show hitting rag house media first show it will be airing every wednesday at 7 p.m and we're not done yet but i just had to like throw that out because some people might be tuning in going what's going on here (laughs) so here we go here's some questions for you okay um if people violate parole what would your suggestion be for parole violations I would say because a parole violation is someone who's already been to prison and it's the whatever the violation was Mm -hmm. is not heavy enough to file a case on them. So I would say if it's not important enough to file a case, then you let it go and you help the person. If it's getting clean, you offer them treatment services. Mm -hmm. If it's being more mentally stable, you offer them medication or counseling. I would say help the person, give them a housing voucher, give them some food. Mm-hmm. Today I drove by and there's a poor guy sitting at the Carl's Jr. And I said, what do you want to eat? That's how we should treat people. Mm-hmm. We need to seek salvation for people, not incarceration. And that's how I look at my clients. I look at them as a family member and how would I want them treated? I would want them treated beautifully. And that's how we should all treat people. Exactly. That, that's a good answer. Um, let's see. Let's talk about Bob's big boy. Oh, <laughs> is that Felicia? <laughs> Uh, yes. <laughs> I remember, is that the one on Euclid, right? Uh, I remember the one on Euclid. Or did you guys go to a different one? We used to dine and dash there. And I apologize. <laughs> the statute of limitations has far passed. And I dined and dashed at Bob's Big Boy regularly. And at Denny's on 4th Street. Oh so I'm so sorry to the waitresses. I waitressed for 10 years. Did anyone dine and dash on you? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Really? Nobody did for me when really? I was, yeah, when I was a food server. Yeah, Cro- Crocodile Cafe San Diego and the Rusty Pelican in Newport Beach. Oh, my God. I love the Rusty Pelican <laughs> in Newport Beach. I worked at Benji's, which used to be on Central and Arrow. And I worked the graveyard shift. Oh. All the clubbers, they would friggin' walk out on me on a nightly basis. And he would make us pay it out of our tips. <gasps> Oh, yeah, wow, but I wouldn't. I Benji. would fight him. I was a lawyer even back then. Oh. I was like, I didn't know that kid walked out. Take it to the EEOC. That is so funny. Dine and Dash, my favorite stories. <laughs> um, Betsy Mars said salvation, not um, incarceration. Love you, Betsy. Betsy's a poet. It's- and um, just so everyone knows, Felicia Balderrama went to high school with us as well. Yes. We love you, Felicia. We love you. She has the best style I've ever seen. Ever, ever. Now, um, if somebody has a question, um, like a question concerning, you know, oh, you know, you're a lawyer. Are they allowed to call in? Are they allowed to ask on the posts? Or how, how, does, how does that work? Well, I can't give them legal advice. I'm actually not allowed to represent anyone but my clients because I'm a public defender, county employee. But if you need some just like friendly advice, I can give that. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. We should always put that out as a yeah. disclaimer right in the beginning. And exactly. Yeah. In the ending. Um, this does not constitute legal advice. It's just <laughs> Jem's bullshit thoughts. <laughs> can I cuss on here? Yes, okay. you can. <laughs> uh, she knows I was a customer restaurant manager and I decided, uh, 
Christina Stockdale. She's from Vegas. Hi, Christina. She's my uh, K-Rock friend. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. From the Uh, K-Rock page. Excellent. I mean, she knows I was a restaurant manager. (laughs) Oh, she was a restaurant manager. I'm sorry, Christina. Christina worked at restaurants for years. Now she works at the DMV and we love you. Christina saw The Cure in England. (gasps) Ooh, jealous. Super jealous. I'm so jealous of her. Let's see. Let's see if there's... um, Love it that your wonder twin called. That's what Judith uh, G W E O N. She's my one of my supervisors at the public defender's office. She's an amazing attorney. She kicks butt on a daily basis. That's yeah. so awesome. Yeah, love you, Judith. Thank you for listening and watching. So I, per- I actually have a personal question. Yeah. So I think your suggestions are so amazing. You know, instead of incarceration, um, you should you know try to assist them and give them help and. What is, if you do that, what's the percentage of outcome that they actually, you know, that they're, it's not abused or that it's actually used? I'm just curious. Yeah, that's a good question. You don't know. There you really aren't a lot of stats on it. And, but the point is, you never know when it's going to stick. Right. One out of 100 or one out of oh, 10. way higher than that. Uh, way higher oh. than that. I worked in mental health court for years and we had really good outcomes. Like, I I can't give you a number, but let me say this. The older someone gets and the more times they fall and get back up, the more likely they are to want the help and take it and change. I really believe in the power of redemption because I am the ultimate story in redemption. (laughs) Ultimate. (laughs) Juvenile delinquent to punk rock high school dropout to USC lawyer to public defender. And I mean, I couldn't imagine when I was a kid that I would be here. Uh You know, I just was trying to survive and waitress and tried to, I moved out when I was 18 and I needed to pay my rent, you know, and I like to, you know, go out and dance too. So, and that's where I met my husband and he's another story for another day. Hi, Adrian. Love you. (laughs) Now let's see, you can call in. We're about, I think we're about close to God. See how fast time goes. It went fast. What are your opinions? This is by Annette M. Rios. What are your opinions on the issue of companies removing their trademark like Uncle Ben and cartoons removing Elmer Fudd's uh, rifle, I think? You know, the rifle, I am, I think you got to put, you got to leave something so we can see the historical context. Maybe you put a disclaimer, maybe you put some kind of statement like with Gone with the Wind, you need to put it in context. But when I saw that Aunt Jemima took down her image, I was happy. Because that image is based on racism and slavery. And we don't need that image out there. Put something innocuous up there. Mm -hmm. No one's really going to mind. The syrup is still syrup. The pancakes are still pancakes. And you don't need to kind of legitimize Mm -hmm. that racial history. But on the other hand, like a gun in Elmer Fudd, I'm sorry. Don't take away my Bugs Bunny cartoons. I love them. (laughs) And Roadrunner. And yeah, they were mean to Roadrunner. But I'm sorry. Life's not fair. And the thing that I've learned the most is that resilience is everything. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I know you're resilient. I'm resilient. And you just got to, you know, make people resilient. But on the other hand, you don't need to legitimize everything. That's true. That is true. What do you think COVID-19 would have looked like in the 80s and 90s by Selena Flores? Oh, I don't even know. It probably would have been a nightmare because, um, you know, maybe it would have been the same. I don't know. We would have had a different president. But maybe it would have been more of the same. I don't know. I don't think people, I think history repeats itself. Right. Well, like the the Black Plague, the bubonic plague. But back then, everybody was going to the churches and sharing the wine cups. And so then the plague was like growing even more rapidly and faster and bigger. So thankfully, you know, there's there's some things that we're learning from our history. You know, there are. But I think what we've learned from COVID is that people need connection. Mm -hmm. And you cannot put people away forever on their own, especially people with mental health issues, especially the elderly. They need us, you know. Well, you know, what hit my brain right away. And because of um, my past was um, right when they said, "Okay, everybody just, you know, has to they have to stay at home. I thought, how about the women who are um, involved in domestic violence? How about the kids who you know, or abused, I get the chills because I just, that was my first initial because I have a happy home. I'm just like, yeah, you know, like we're okay. You know, we have food. We, you know, we have water. um, But about those others that don't have, you know, that happy stuff, that's, that's where my heart went right away. And so I was just like, oh my goodness. And you hope they have people they can reach out to, right? Right. Because I think that um, 
rates of divorce are probably going to go up, rates mm-hmm. of domestic violence. Everyone's getting on everyone's nerves. But in the end, if you like, I live with my husband and my 86 year old mother in law and my two Shih Tzus and the dogs bark all the time. And, and what's their names again? Frodo and Chewbacca. <laughs> Hope you're watching. Love you. And, and, you know, when you're at home all day and you're trying to work and these dogs are barking, it drives you almost mad. And I. I see how people's nerves are frayed. But on the other hand, if you're in a dangerous situation, try to leave, try to reach out. There's a lot of resources out there and you can find those on different websites. But yeah. Yeah, it's there. It's there. I'm so I'm so happy with your story, Girl Fight, that you actually were able to connect it to the current times right now. Yeah, I don't know how I did that, but yeah, that that was great. (laughs) Uh, We're almost going to have to go, but you could give us a call 909-477-7321. Felicia and Felicia said drink soon. Oh, yes. Yes. Felicia and I have been FaceTiming during these times and drinking some seltzers and I've had to cut down a lot. And so I allow myself weekends, but Mm -hmm. I might have one tonight when I get home. Oh, absolutely. But I quit smoking. Oh, good. I, you know what? Nobody knew. And it's funny. I'm going to throw this out. Every time I had a drink, I had a smoke. Oh, me too. Nobody knew. And I quit. um, I want to say two years ago. Nobody knew. And I was like a closet smoker. And it's, I would have the same pack of cigarettes in my junk drawer, which I would call my junk drawer. (laughs) For like a month, you know, and minor in my car in the little thing, like yeah. hidden, yeah. And that's so I'm saying this now because I quit, and I was so happy it wasn't hard. I literally just one day said I'm going to quit, and it happened, and I was like, whoa. You know where I picked up smoking? Europe when I went to yep. school abroad in Italy. So that wasn't a a good thing that I picked up in Italy. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else was awesome except for that. I picked up smoking when I was 12. Oh my goodness! Mm-hmm. With Christy from the Section Eight Apartments, she taught me to smoke. Um, behind the bathroom. <laughs> she taught you how to smoke. Mm-hmm. That is hilarious. We're going to put on some music because that's what me and the life of Jem are all about. <laughs> that's so true. How all many concerts music. have you been? Oh, hundreds. hundreds. I've seen more. See, like 14 times. No, 12 times. X, eight times. I mean, I see the same bands over and over. My go-tos are Morrissey, X, Buzzcocks, mm-hmm. anything punk related, anything uh, post-punk related. Uh-huh. Um, Susie, I've seen. I've seen pretty. I saw the Smiths in the '80s at the Palladium with Tracy. Fun, yeah. fun, fun. You have to bring your friends. Oh, in. I'm going to, and they're going to come. Just do your makeup, do your hair, and you'll feel fine. Yeah, put on huh. some heels, put on some pumps, <laughs> right? So Pump it up. the life of Jim next Wednesday at 7 p.m. What are we going to talk about then? Have you figured out what story you're going <sighs> to embrace? Because you have so many, and they're so awesome. Music. It's going to be music. a music story. Maybe Go Go's, maybe Smiths. Haven't decided yet. Excellent. Okay, so you're tuning in to The Life of Jem happening every Wednesday right here at 7 p.m. on Wednesdays. We're so excited. You <laughs> Thank did you. amazing. Wait, wait, we're not done quite We're not yet. done? Oh, oh and by the way, this. April and I are both wearing leopard. I know, just, you know, without even talking about it. We didn't plan it, promise. We did not plan it, but I have to tell you, this is exactly how I feel right now about it. <laughs> Good show. And um, anything else you would like to say before we go? Thanks, everyone, for listening. Thanks for commenting. Thanks for calling. And I'll see you next week. Rock on. Peace.